Welcome to Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name is Ed Piscor. I'm Sean, Japan Book Hunter. And I'm Brian Moss. And today we're going to take a look at some uh, rare treats from uh, Kazuo Umez. Uh, known as Kazuo Umezu in uh, the States, they, they uh, forego the last Z mm. in, in favor of a U. Yeah, because his birth name was, you know, Umezu. I see. Right? But he likes to go by Umez. I dig it. And in the States, we have uh, a number of books that have been translated. Uh, Drifting Classroom and Cat-Eyed Boy just got uh, a new uh, release. Uh, it's been out of print for quite a while, but it's got a new release. So just want to give some uh, some visual aids to the cartoonists that we're going to be checking out. There's also a, a series called uh, 14 that is uh, super great that I have uh, collected little Tanko Bon of, but I don't know that it's been translated in English yet. I don't think it has yet, and it's a big series, 17 volumes, mm -hmm. and Chicken George, man, the <laughs> right. amazing Chicken George. Yes, that was my introduction, man. Like uh, It's, it's an incredible uh, costume. I, maybe I'll flash an image up uh, of that, but we are here with uh, Sean, the Japan book hunter, at his headquarters, and of course, Sean is slang in the rarities and the and the bougie treats. So let's take a look at some of that rare umes. The videos are brought to you by the books that we make. And 2023 was and is a big year. 2024 is going to be just the same. The Hip Hop Family Tree Omnibus is out there. About 75% of this print run has uh, been accounted for. So you guys have about 25% left of our, our stock to go. Scoop up that book if you see it. It's going to make an excellent gift. The X-Men Grand Design Trilogy comes out uh, November 14th. It collects all of my X-Men Grand Design works inside of one nice, handy, uh, soft cover. Scoop that up. There are three volumes of Red Room that are uh, completed. Two of them are out on the stands right now, the Antisocial Network and Trigger Warnings. But coming to you in early 2024 is Red Room Crypto Killers with dozens of pages of extra features and commentary in the back. Street Angel, Princess of Poverty is coming to you at the end of November. Uh, it is a companion piece to Street Angel, Deadliest Girl Alive. Uh, you get both of these books. You have all of Jimmy's uh, Street Angel comics to date. He's been self-publishing, and here you have True Crime Funnies, the black and white zine, 1986 zine. Go to Jimmy's website. Uh, he might be sold out right at the moment, but uh, you never know. He, he might have fresh stock, depending on when you're watching this video. And uh, Hulk Grand Design is Jimmy's contribution to the Grand Design mythology that we have created for Marvel Comics. Now that we're done paying the bills, let's get back to the video. All right. What do we have here? So this is a box set released in 1982 in their reprints of his rental manga that he had put out in his early career. And when we say early career, he was 14 years old. He That's, started at 14. It's unbelievable. Yeah, and he was, and then he was mass producing right off the bat. Wow. So uh, the one key thing about this is at the very bottom of the stack, there's a little supplemental. And they put these supplementals in box sets to just kind of explain what's going on. And if you open up that first page there. Oh, my goodness. Signed with a little drawing. By Umez, of course. Now, Sean, the people at home are getting stoked. They're pulling out their wallets. Is this from your personal collection? This is from my personal collection, but I do track stuff like this down. But, I mean, this is this is actually when I moved into this new space, a present to myself. I think I paid about three fifty for the set. That's mm -hmm. incredible. Uh, but we should probably let the people know that you do traffic in Umez comics. Like those cat-eye boys I took off of your retail shelf. Yes, those are for sale. And I have a lot of stuff. Uh, God's left hand, devil's right hand. Um, lots of his one shots. Uh, he did He did gag manga early on? He did, a, he did a lot of gag manga. He did Makoto-chan which was his most famous gag manga series. That became an anime mm. on TV. Okay. Um, like many of his, his titles became right. anime, but the most esoteric stuff never made it, like Ooh. 17 or... Whereas you had um, other things. NHK made a radio drama of I Am Shingo, for example. I see. So in NHK, it's like our, you know, PBS of Of Japan. course, mm. yes. So would something like this be readily available, Sean, or is this, like, hard to find? This is hard to find because this was a limited edition box set, limited to 500. Oh, so do everyone has a sketch in it, you think, or no? No. So what he probably did was held an exhibition around the time of the release to promote it. People who bought the box sets at the exhibition got him signed, and those who missed out had right. to just go pick it up without the, the awesome art in it. Yeah, should we, have been born earlier. We talked about this before. Uh, the uh, the Kashi Hone 
drawn uh, reasonably fast. Now I'm taking a look through this and I think that I see some deliberate influence probably from Tezuka because it has that uh, that Fleischer type style. You know, like the, the mm -hmm. old school Disney animation type vibe. The rubber vibe. tube. Mm-hmm. Do you have some idea about when these... Uh, rent, well, I mean, what, what's the era of the rental manga? So it would be uh, later 50s into the mid-60s. Right. So these are probably early 60s, 63-ish around there. And then also similar style at that time, you know, Tatsumi Yoshiharu, or Yoshihiro, sorry. Right, right, right. Um, and, uh, of course, Tezuka. And then later all those guys, of course, branched out into their own styles. Look right. at this, man. You could see little glimmers of future Umez in the mix here. Mm -hmm. This stuff is really sweet to look at because you're seeing a lot of rough edges that get burnished off. Yeah, it's he very becomes, experimental, actually. Yeah, yeah, playing with different tools to get yeah. that ink line down. Yeah. That's a struggle for a lot of uh, cartoonists in the States uh, whenever they're putting pen to paper on their printed works. Like, trying to figure out how to uh, navigate inking takes a while for more uh, adventurous creators. Yeah. You know, the creator that doesn't kind of kind of, kind of just settle into a routine early. Mm -hmm. So what do you, we, this is Hansel and Gretel, huh? Is this all fairy tales? So this one is a collection of of some fairy tale based stuff. So a lot of the, the rental manga they were either kind of rip off fairy tales, mm -hmm. sports meaning sumo and baseball, okay, or they were like mystery, you know, kind of you know like Tintin type stuff. Of course, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. That makes a lot of sense because you know the famous one that that I know really is that uh, New Treasure Island uh, Tezuka. So of course that's a riffing off of some some uh, uh what do you call it public domain properties <laughs> <laughs> yeah there was a lot of riffing off stuff in those days this is something that i always like to see in drawings something that i it's an observant qu kind of quality to like have the sun rays come through the foliage yeah that that's easy to miss if you're drawing something like this but whenever mm -hmm. it's added it's always a excellent touch yeah there's a lot of um learning here going on so this is definitely a great video to pause on and zoom in you know absolutely because it's literally the opposite of the and this boy work and everything yeah this is this is my favorite kind of stuff to kind of pour through this is sweet and of course thinking about his early career to his later career when he gets into like the ultra violent bizarre mm -hmm. then it's very singular like like his his career and the kind of manga that he makes there's just not not anybody else like doing that that kind of brand. I mean, he's clearly an influence of people like Junji Ito mm. and uh, the the sort of late period, you know, shown in horror, horror. I mean, shojo horror, uh, mangaka. And a lot of them like knew him or worked under him, and then just blatantly bit his style, but not in a bad way. Right. In you know homage to him. <laughs> yeah, so. we call it an homage. <laughs> <laughs> in hip hop, it's called sampling. Sampling. Well, there's a lot of sampling. I mean, like the close up on his faces that he always has the horrified faces. Right. Always like really tight, tightly paneled. Mm -hmm. Like that's something that a lot of shoujo horror mangaka went on to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because it's successful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, show the Very horror. Effective. Yeah. So we're seeing it right there. Yeah. Like that little bit of like this, the early stages of him just doing these close-ups of the eyes. That's a crazy dinosaur too, man. And, and he's using different marks for the shading and stuff, which is kind of a fascinating thing. Oh my goodness. You even see bits like this in Drifting Classroom. Mm -hmm. So this guy's learning along the way. And uh, I've, I've done some work in animation that required me to draw some like 10, 15 pages of stuff a day. Not comic pages, but pages full of just drawings of bodies, yeah. twisted up arms, all Different stuff. Different assets. When you have to draw fast, you learn fast. And I think that uh, with a set like this, it's letting you know that you don't create something like Cat Eye Boy out of thin air. Right, exactly. You got to put in that pencil mileage, you got to get that 10,000 hours under mm -hmm. your belt real quick. And uh, on top of just the drawing acumen, there's storytelling things that this guy's learning. Right. Very cool. Oh, we're going full sh shoujo with this one, huh? Yeah. Cute, but, you know, a little mysterious. There might be a jump scare here or there, but it's, you know. It's reasonably disturbing. Like, that's a little disturbed because cause it's like... It's like extra cute, but it's almost like propaganda cute. Where it's like, I know that it ain't gonna, it, it ain't gonna be like this for long. Right. 
incredible man. So off the top of your head, uh, Sean, what kind of um, Uma stuff do you have uh, that you're slanging that's freely available to the public? Um, I have some of his perfection series like Orochi or God's Left Hand, Devil's Right Hand, which looks something like this. These are getting harder and harder. So the perfection series was all put out in 2005 and 2000 to 2007 to commemorate his uh, 50 years as a manga artist. So if you start doing the math, in 2005, almost 20 years ago, he'd already done 50 years That's incredible. of manga creating. And so they did these beautiful series um, called the Perfection Series. Is, that, is that, that's what this is? And that's what this is, God's Left Hand, the Devil's Right Hand. And then they put out a few other ones. They put out uh, Snake Woman, they put out Orochi, they put out that Cat Eye Boy that you showed earlier. Mm -hmm. It's pretty much his key titles all got a perfection edition. And then I have a lot of his old, um, his old Tunkle Bones that he released, and then some of the, the super visual comics that he released as well. And those are a bit more affordable than the Perfection series. These are incredible, beautifully printed. I love the graphic design. Uh, the only other books that I know that got this kind of co color blocking treatment, really, is the, the uh, big Akira Tankobon would have, mm -hmm. you know, multi mm -hmm. multi color color blocking like this. Right. You don't see that often. I mean, this thing pops, man. It sizzles, dude. Uh, that's fluorescent inks. Mm -hmm. And uh, what we learned about fluorescent inks from from uh, Jimmy when he was doing Octobriano, you have to. Uh, you have to print it twice. Multiple times, and, yeah. I, and I do know that uh, there are Japanese publishers out here who um, do, like, a slow press. So I, I knew this uh, dude. He, they, they somehow got photographs of from a space telescope. And the dude got a deal for a book. And they insisted that they use some Japanese printer out here that has, like, a slow ruler printer that really pushes that mm -hmm. ink into the paper. And if I was out on a limb, I would say that this was probably printed on some similar, uh, some similar apparatus. Look at this stuff, man. <laughs> Rusty scissors. <laughs> Rusty scissors. All about the scissors. He, uh, he, just when you thought he showed you all the body horror one could show you, you got a girl vomiting enough to uh, destroy a desk in a. In a, in a classroom. Yeah, and then she goes on to vomit a tricycle. She goes, <laughs> uh, uh, basically the whole kitchen sink. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Viz, publish that story for us. That's the problem with Umez, is some of it's so bizarre that it'll never get an English mm -hmm. translation. Um, like Baptism, which is a, a wonderful series. It's, it's only a few books, so it'd be easy to publish in English. But it's about a mother who raises a daughter, the mother's really ugly, but she raises a, a beautiful daughter just to kill her and steal her body and transplant her brain into it. And then she does adult things in a kid's body. That's never going to get any English No, 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 no that ain't coming. <laughs> yeah, that ain't coming. So this one story, it's, it's all about the scissors, huh? The scissors are the MacGuffin, it seems. Yeah, so the first chapter is Rusty Scissors, and then there's different <laughs> chapters, but it's all an overall theme of shows possession by this demon i see and his and so there's a bunch of surreal stuff going on and he doesn't really have to stick to a clear um story arc right. because we're in this magical world all right right uh are, are so with that in mind are a lot of these one shots that are just uh ganged up so in this there is an overall story to this okay, so they okay. all tie together but um each chapter is its kind of own little mini saga. Dig it. And then by the time we get towards the end of volume two in this, I, in the Tonko Bone, I believe it's a six volume set. Right. Um, then when you start getting towards the end, then you get to see the demon that is causing all of this mayhem <laughs> to happen. But, you know, along the way, you have some child murder, teacher murder, you know, puking up tricycles. Just when he lulls you in, you, you'll get pages like this showing up. Unbelievable. There's a spareness to his line, and there's a uniformity to the pages that it makes me wonder if he is one of those mangaka that didn't use all that many assistants, or if he did use assistants, if they uh, just did very, very nominal things, yeah, you know, like, panels. like yeah, nothing, nothing too, too major. You don't, with Umez, you don't really see any influence in, like, in the background, in the, right. in the landscapes, it all seems Umez. It does, mm -hmm. it does, yeah, it's a, it's a very... It's a very focused 
kind of work, you know, and, and that was, that's the thing that, like, whenever Americans, like, really first discovered manga, that's the part that made everybody curious. We went through issue, uh, v volume five of Akira with Frank Whiteley on, uh, the Kayfabe channel, and he talked about being so, uh, confounded by, he described it as the cartoon masks on the characters' faces, like, he didn't understand why the faces were built that way, when the bodies and the drapery of the clothes was so accurate, and certainly the backgrounds and fighter jets and stuff are like picture perfect, mm -hmm. it's that's it's something that we have to like read about and, and 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 figure out, you know, sort of ourselves or just through immersion. Right. Unbelievable. Heads in the fridge. <laughs> <laughs> so, Sean, people could go to uh, JapanBookHunter.com. Yes, and just search Umez up in there, and a lot of titles will pop up, because I always keep Umez in stock, because one of my favorites, and one of your favorites, too, once you start reading them. Totally. Uh, we did an interview with Peter Chung, the creator of uh, Aeon Flux, and he cites uh, Kazuo Umez as one of, one of his major mm. influences, and I'm assuming that uh, on the Japan Book Hunter site, because Umez comes in many flavors... Probably uh, there's a range of prices, man, it's from uh, more affordable to some, some high-end stuff. Exactly. So I try to keep a nice wide range in there because I just... The, the whole purpose of doing this in the beginning was to expose Westerners to some of this beautiful art by these mangaka that are lesser known outside of Japan. And uh, the best way to do that is offer a little bit of everything. Excellent. Thanks so much, Sean. Yo, Brian Moss, man, tell the people where they could get some of your comics. For sure. If you hit my Instagram or my Etsy, it's going to be Strange Things Moss, all one word, or it's Brian Christopher Moss on Instagram, and then you can just inbox me there, and I can direct you or hook you up directly. And uh, those links will be in the description of this video. Hey, favors, like, follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel, hit the bell so that we can let you know what new videos are uh, available. We are a daily YouTube channel with more than 1,500 videos in our filmography, and there's a good chance we talked about some of your favorite comics. I encourage you to hit the magnifying glass on the front page of the Kayfabe YouTube channel, search for your favorite titles, and uh, check out those episodes. If, by chance, we did not talk about your favorite comics on the channel yet, you have to let us know. Do, the, do so in the comments. Let us know what those comics are, and we will push those comics a little bit higher on our to-read pile. Jimmy and I are going to be at Big Apple Comic Con uh, come December 16th. It's been years since we've been to the Big Apple, and uh, we look forward to seeing you guys. So, so please come through and bring your comics that we have yet to sign. We have a Patreon, and on the Cartoonist Kayfabe Patreon... Uh, the King Kayfabers get all the videos before anybody else, and uh, w when the internet cooperates, they are hanging out with us in a live stream recording session as we uh, make these episodes, mitigates the Kayfabe effect. Ultimately, the videos are brought to you by the books that we make, and Before You is a pretty good sample of our bibliography, but we'll get into the nitty gritty. Jimmy, let the people know what you got coming out soon. My next release is Street Angel, Princess of Poverty from Image Comics. This will be out in late November in time for the holiday gift for the uh, action comic, superhero comic lover in your life. And Street Angel, Princess of Poverty collects all the Street Angel comics that are not in Street Angel, Deadliest Girl Alive, also available from Image. And uh, get both books. It'll complete your collection. I have been self-publishing lately. True Crime Funnies number one is available on jimrug.com, along with BW and 1986 zine. And if they are sold out there, you can still read them on patreon.com slash jimrug. And my contribution to the grand design history is The Hulk, which is available in limited quantities because it is sold out at the uh, distribution level. So if you haven't added Hulk grand design to your collection yet, you need to pick that up next time you hit the comic shop. Hip Hop Family Tree Omnibus is my big one for 2023, and uh, it is going fast. Man, there's more than uh, probably 75% of this print run is gone, and stores have been re-upping. It was the number one reordered book on, on Comicron, uh, so thank you guys so much. Thanks to the stores for uh, for supporting the book, but if you even have any thought that, you're, that you want this or you want to get it as a gift, make sure you scoop it up uh, right away. Uh, it's the best book I've made to date, 500 plus pages. 10-year anniversary of Hip Hop Family Tree, 50th anniversary of the culture. Scoop it up. Uh, not the last holiday release I'm going to have. Uh, coming November 14th is the X-Men Grand Design trade paperback, collecting all of my X-Men Grand Design works. Uh, a couple volumes of the, that is out of print uh, as we speak, so make sure uh, if you are missing out on your uh, X-Men Grand Design, 
scoop that up, you'll get it all in one. And there is a trilogy of horror comics that I have made under the Red Room umbrella, Antisocial Network, Trigger Warnings, and coming in January is this trade paperback right here called Crypto Killers, which uh, collects my 2023 season of Red Room comics with a bunch of extras. The books are the most important part of keeping cartoonist kayfabe solvent and uh, functional. But there are some other ways to support the channel. Jimmy, let the people know. You can subscribe to the Cartoonist Kayfabe newsletter at the links below this video. You can also pick up Cartoonist Kayfabe t-shirts, merchandise, mugs, stickers, and more at our spread shop. That link is also under this video. All good ways to support the channel. Give them those final merchandise, Jimmy, and we'll be on our way. Read more comics.